Meltdown is a weakness up the rock, uh, a very hard climbing, which is a really rare thing to find, particularly on that angle, and particularly um, on that angle using quite big holds. So the you know the holds are in really weird positions, and I can't remember a route with ten moves on it I've never done before. I remember abbing down after a party with Skinny Dave and we had a horrible dog of a rope. We didn't really know where it came from. And it was, it was oily and, and marked and stuff. And there was no bee laid at the top there, so we tied off a house. We thought there's no way all that weight of slate is going to pull this through. So he put it through and made sure that none of the sharp edges were there. Then we went to the edge and we thought, well, is that block going to move? Is that no, that's okay. We abseiled down there. And uh, the groove, I remember seeing Quarryman groove. I was really into I think we have there first down the twin cracks down the whole cliff. So we have down Blockhead, I think. And I remember looking down and thinking I was a bit annoyed that I'd sailed down that rather than the groove because that's really what I fancied doing. Um, it looks really quite big, that wall, but actually it's not huge. It's like about 200 foot. But that's perfect. You know, it's it's a really, really good good height because it's really exposed, it's really easy to get to, the rock's really solid. It's so sheer that it looks vertical, but in fact it's off vertical, so it's kind of flattering. So you feel like you're actually doing impossible moves, you know, and then you're doing another impossible move. And the, they haven't been done these things before. And I just could not believe that people hadn't sort of why had nobody talked about this wall? It was like, to me, it was the best wall in North Wales. And also, I'd seen other pictures of, of different places in the country. And it, it was just, I mean, gold and red and, and like was all wavy, like it, like it had been a, something with a the celestial butter knife had just sort of put the aurora borealis down it. And it was glittering. It was amazing. And, you know, and then the roots were not, they weren't 9A+. Plus. And they weren't 7A+. Plus. They, they were exactly the right standard for what I, I could do and for what I could aspire to. So Absil down and started, started um, putting dangerous bolts in it. I mean, when we went down to the bottom, I could see this amazing scoopy... You know, because what, what you want is, what I want anyway, is, is not hold, and I don't want it to be blank. I want it to be a, a maelstrom of possibilities that, that movement can, can add grip to. So, so that you can use movement and mental faculty to, to exercise grip, you know, to make grip. So that's exactly what the meltdown has. So that's quite rare rock. A water-worn granite has that quality. Gritstone has that in a very sort of like peaky way you know you can't use the whole suit so you, you you press really hard on it but slate has got a very it's got a more modulated more sort of um the way you make the grip is is more is more interesting in a way more more very symphonic you know this hand's losing grip as that's getting grip and then speed's needed there and then real gentle pressure there so the whole thing is modulating and meltdown was all about the reason why i like the term meltdown um because it's nothing to do with the uh, the brass thing, although it sort of suits it, it comes from that kind of feeling, is that the um, it looks like it's been melted. You know, the rock is molten looking, but it's also down to the fact that um, your mind, you know, you sort of put the shape into your mind and it comes out with a solution, and then you try it, and then it's all movement. So it stays turbulent, that route stays turbulent. Whereas other routes on slate, you know, they're, they're interesting and you feel like a fly on the wall, but it's a kind of, it's, 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 it's the redhead genre of flat to the rock, you know, like reaching up like this sort of thing. You need flexibility, you need determination and you need to be loose and then really, really stiff and then loose and then stiff. You've got to be able to sort of, uh, you know, you've got to be able to generate grip and be really clear about the shapes you're gonna hit.
it's 9A. I'm sure it's 9A. I mean, I'm not sure it is. I've, I've seen 9As. I've seen people climbing 9As, and it's just, it's because it's just how the hell can you stand around in five places on a 9A? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a really strange route. It's a really strange route. And it's not like you can do more pull-ups than men do the rig, or go get fitter. No, your the foot, your feet will just come off quicker. Yeah. So it's a really hard one to train for, but you can't. You've just got to apply yourself to the I think you just do lots and lots of, of, of slate, really get used to slate movement, get iron fingers, way fuck all, and, uh, and speak a bit like this, really. Paint slowly. Without, without discernible emotion. <laughs> Part of the training, so I'd, I'd been training and I'd been w working doing the scrambling course with this group for five days at Benin. It was dead warm but dead wet, so I had all my waterproofs on. So I lost probably half, knock, knocking on half a stone in a week, probably through water attention. Maybe, but, so I was dead light and I had this going, it would peak Thursday night, so my legs were knackered, I thought I'd have a shit go. But obviously, I knew the moves dead well, and I did it with like one fall high up, got you know, my high point, hit the stack. Um, hit it, hit it, didn't hang it. Uh, but you know, it was like the high point I had. Then I pulled back on, went to the end, thought, brilliant. You know, this is, and that was through being light. So I, was, I wasn't as light as it was last year, but I was, I wasn't far off. I felt like, um, yeah, felt just, you know, when you feel light on the rock. Yeah. So that's, but that was partly through training and partly through just work and burning off. Uh, yeah, burning okay. off a lot of calories <laughs> in your waterproofs in the in the jungle, as it felt like.
the bolt higher. I was dead nervous about these things. When I was on the lead, it'd be gutted if one of these flakes went on you. Yeah, John, Johnny Dawes' efforts in the 80s, yeah, were, um, yeah, just awesome. <laughs> what can you say? I mean, in the 80s, especially 86, you know, you look at the routes that he was bringing out, and they, they shut down some of the best climbers today, really. Things like Coeur de Leon there, giving it E6. Bit of a joke. You know, E7 to the first bolt, then French A to the top. And the link he did on the meltdown was really impressive. You know, it was definitely 8B plus, maybe 8C, uh, back when it was really hard. <laughs> you know, 85, 86, or whatever he was doing it. Um, you know, it took me ages to get through the step left. <laughs> you know, this guy's uh, slipped off it a lot. It's one of them moves. Um, and, you know, I, I, th I get the feeling that he, you know, he managed to get through that after a few goes. So, yeah, really impressed with him. somebody's project yeah yeah I bolted up um, it's just a different sort of thing it's not a product it's a, it, it's an adventure even if it's safe it's an it's a historical exploration <laughs>